Hello, in this demonstration, I will guide you through the McAfee Enterprise Security Manager Initial Configuration Wizard. The ESM Initial Configuration Wizard is designed to ease some of the tasks associated with the first time setup of the McAfee ESM. Here you can see I've connected to a brand new ESM and I am prompted for my first time logon. This user account and the password details will be provided in the documentation that ships with your system. Before I log in though, you can see that we also offer the ability to select the language for the current console session. This option can be changed anytime by logging out and selecting a different language before logging in again, or by selecting a different language from your console options. More languages are also planned for future releases. Most everyone asks, what does NGCP stand for? This account and the trivia behind it starts over 10 years ago with the first console release. That console was called the Nitro Guard Control Panel and was the very beginnings of our admin account today. Don't forget that the user account is case sensitive. As with most systems, the first step is to read the end user license agreement and choose to accept or decline the terms. I always advise everyone to read the agreement before accepting, of course. I've read ours and made sure there were no new terms and will accept the agreement now. As a security platform, McAfee strives to ensure that default configurations are changed upon initial setup, forcing you in this next step to update the default passwords here. Going a little further, we also offer the ability to update the default administrator account. This account cannot be locked or deleted, which makes it a good candidate to have its name changed from the out-of-box default. Take note to remember this change as all the documentation will still refer to this account as NGCP. The McAfee SIM is fully accredited by the U.S. government, and as such, we have the option to set the system into FIPS mode, or the Federal Information Processing Standards mode. Customers that are in the federal space will know if this standard applies to them, and will know when they must select this option. The majority of everyone else can choose no as we've recommended in the description. Since this option is a permanent setting that cannot be reversed, we have one last challenge to ensure that your selection is correct. Access for policy updates and new parsing and correlation rules is provided for all new ESM installations for up to 30 days without a customer ID. This notice lets you know what information is required and where to send it if it hasn't been provided to you with the initial system. At this point, we are now at the initial configuration wizard. We can set the default language option for the SIM device log as well as the local time zone and the date format. The time zone option will help while creating data sources, but the system will continue to run in GMT when it receives its time updates from the time servers. Lastly, we have the ability to change the date format for your organization if they use a different format than month, day, year. You can see these in the drop downs displayed here. If at any time you want to skip this wizard and configure these options later, you can click finish or if there are no settings in the current page that you need to change, you can also click Next. Moving to the network configurations, you'll see that we have already set the IP address for the first interface when we set up the appliance to begin. We can also change things such as assigning the VLAN alias for the ports, adding the IP addresses to the secondary management port, or configuring the DNS addresses. To make these changes, you can simply click the Advanced button and add aliases or add VLAN tags. Changing your DNS settings would be applied here. We also give you the option to change the SSH port if your organization uses a different port setting than port 22. To continue our security platform, we also give you the ability to change whether your system will respond to pings or if you wish to have a destination unreachable or redirect created for ICMP messages. There are no further changes on this page. I'll simply click Next. In my ESM that I'm setting up today, I don't have a proxy server to connect to the internet, so I'll leave these settings blank. 
if your organization does have proxy servers required to connect to the internet, all that's needed is for you to provide the IP address, the port in which you proxy through, and the credentials in which you need to access the proxy server. Since there are no changes, I'll click Next. Similar to proxy settings, some organizations also have static routes between their VLANs and need to have this configured as well. To add a static route, simply click the Add button and fill in the details for the static route. Again, as my ESM here is directly connected to the internet, there's no requirement for me to set up static routes. No changes, I'll simply click Next. Time synchronization is very important inside of a SIM and ensuring that the time stays on track is the focus of this setting. We allow up to 10 different time servers to be configured, but normally you will only have one or two. From here, I'll move the external time service up to the top and remove the other options. If your time servers also require authentication and key IDs, those can be set here as well. Finally, we have the settings for the customer ID and scheduling of policy and rule updates. As we displayed earlier, you should have a message from the McAfee Licensing Group that has these details in it. If you do not, that's okay. You can enter those later. But if you do, enter them here. Moving forward, if you want to have the ESM check and schedule updates on a periodic basis, all you must do is simply check this checkbox and input the time needed for those checks. Finally, if you've downloaded the rule update file from our download site, you can click the manual update option here and upload that file directly to the ESM itself. With all of these configurations set, we're now ready to click finish and move forward with our ESM installation.